Alright everybody, welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker and here we are in Victoria 3 playing Liberty or Death. In our last episode we did manage to knock slavery out of Brazil and Morocco and we managed to drive the Spanish out of the Caribbean but of course we weren't actually able to ban slavery in Spain because that would have required us to land and then occupy Madrid. We'll do that once we probably have trench infantry but we are going to be declaring independence from Great Britain shortly. I looked into it and the original Haitian Declaration of Independence was actually Actually on January 1st, 1804. So rather than you using the US date for a declaration of independence, I think we're going to do it on January 1st, uh, 1877. Th I think that's more flavorful. Plus it gives us a little bit of time to build up our military between now and then because we're going to need it. We've dramatically expanded our number of generals though, uh, so that way all of these little territories that we've occupied can actually field troops because we're going to need to be able to field troops on a lot of fronts. We're going to need to be able to field a lot of troops on a lot of fronts. If the armed forces dip below 10 approval though, we'll end up switching our law that we're working on over to National Guard. It'll make the intelligentsia really mad, but that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. But we need the armed forces approval bonus. We're also going to go ahead and try to just top off our gold reserves because we're going to burn through cash fighting against the British. Unfortunately for us, there's really no way for our navy to contest control of the seas, so we're gonna get convoy raided into outer space. All right, so it looks like Great Britain and Great Ching are about to get into a fight. That's simultaneously good and bad because it means that the the British are gonna have a little bit of a mobilization advantage on us. But it's also like pretty obviously bad for the British because it means that now they're going to have to be fighting against us and Great Ching at the same time. All right, so here it is, January 1st, 1877. It's time for the second declaration of Haitian independence. I think the way we're going to do it is we're going to go transfer subject on Zulu. Let's do ban slavery in Zulu. Let's do independence from Great Britain, and let's do British war reparations. That combination for our treaty should get us what we're looking for here. We are, however, going to need to mobilize everybody. We're also going to need to drop down some conscription decrees. I think we need an enlistment effort in Benin and in Cuba, and so that means we have to drop our greener grass campaign that we've been running like all campaign in Haiti. And, uh, and now we're just going to activate all of our conscription centers. But because we're fighting at the same time as the British army, the price on things is going to spike. So let's go ahead and see if we can find any import routes for guns or ammunition just to keep our prices low. All right, so we've uh, deployed our troops all over the empire. We'll see how this goes, but we should be okay because we do have some some vassal allies. That's going to be really helpful. And then hopefully once we're done with Guyana, we should be able to shuffle over here. Well, it looks like the majority of the British troops that are being deployed right now are being deployed on this Togo front. So hopefully we can hold down the there. As long as we can and we can clean up elsewhere, then we should be okay on this war. And given that there's nobody fighting us over in Senegal or in Mauritania, I'm going to send this 26 down. And then once we've actually taken control of Guyana and Guatemala, we might have those smaller stacks come over here so that way we can focus our main fighting down here because, wow, this is going to be a heck of a fight. And we hit public schools, so let's start working on National Guard just to get our stats up on our units. Yep, yeah, looks like we are just carving straight through Guyana. Good. We'll also go ahead and naval invade Zululand. Are we going to hold out in this fight? It, it sure looks like it. It looks like we are going to crush the British here. We can even switch Nelson Schomburg over to a, an offensive setting. So the British are going to send some troops to this Mauritanian front. Are they still fighting Great Ching? They are still fighting Great Ching. I think that's definitely helping us. Any distraction for the British is going to be good for us. All right, awesome. We hit field hospitals. That means we can go ahead and just upgrade here. And the war is ongoing, so I'll see if there's anything we can import just to reduce our military costs. Yeah, we can get Russian guns. Good, because we are already up to a negative 177k balance. That's uh, Let's take civilizing mis mission. I want to build the Panama Canal. Oh my god, we are attacking into Togo, and it looks like we're going to win. That'll tr that'll push a lot of troops over to this uh, the Niger front, but if they're over here, that means that they're fighting deep in their own territory, which, which helps us in regards to preventing us being forced to pay war operations. We'll send a little bit of reinforcement over there. Oh boy, we've advanced into British territory. They're also all on defense now, so we'll switch over to all on defense just to recover a little bit, because we are really pressing the British everywhere. All right, so we have a, a new government. It looks like it's going to be... Oh, it'll be this guy. So Benigno de la Torre is, is back out of power. And it looks like this is maybe Francisco's brother who ended up becoming 
an expert defensive strategist somewhere along the way? Why aren't you out here commanding, Gumercindo de Rojas? What are you doing? Well, you know what? We could probably try to attack again, just to see if we can actually push the British out here of, of Togo. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have the, the strength necessary to beat the British 1v1 like this. I mean, it's not really purely 1v1, because the, uh, the British are fighting Great Ching at the same time. Oh, nope, their war is over. So now we are just fighting British 1v1. They are reinforcing Mauritania, so we're gonna need to reinforce that. We have the troops necessary to do so. Oh, great, we hit National Guard too. We kind of didn't need National Guard, but that's just a, a huge bonus to the happiness for armed forces. Not to mention it means that now in the future, great powers will see us as having a much bigger number of conscriptable battalions, because we will. Yeah, rip in peace gold reserves, oh my god, it burn millions of pounds in this war, but I think it is going to be worth it, because once we've gained independence, then all of our trade that we do is going to just be about our specific market and not the British market generally. And now we're at the point where I think we have enough specialized demand within our country and enough specialized supply, because, you know, we do have some, some fun subjects here, that we can create some real value for us through trade. Oh, baby, if we can just finish Togo, then Mauritania can get all the reinforcements it could ever dream of. Our troops in Senegal are suffering from convoy raiding now, so that's pretty scary. There it is, we've kicked the British out of Togo. This is the end of the war, I think, and the British will accept this peace. They're at minus 82% war support, but they will accept us uh, demanding everything, so let's do it. That feels really good. We can't rest on our laurels. We need to fix our economy, and we need to fix it pronto. So I'm just going to go through and delete all of our bad trade routes. There are going to be plenty of them. Now we are a great power, so we just have way more interests that we can lay down, which is great because we, we need as much trade as we can get. And now we need to start doing some imports. All right, so we have just dramatically changed around our trade route setup, and we should be able to see some pretty enormously productive trade routes just emerge, thanks to the fact that we're no longer shackled to the, the British market. We can now sell our goods to the entire world. Not to mention the fact that now we are a great power, which means that we can pull people into our market just using obligations and bankrolling. So we'll just see who we uh, who we can now sign trade agreements with, because I, I would love to sign some trade agreements with people. Not the United States, you still have slavery, right? Yeah, they still have slavery, so not them, but anybody else, pretty much. And you would ask, like, why are we signing a, a trade agreement here with Siam? Because we have a treaty port here. We're just doing it so that way they'll be friendlier with us and they'll want to jump in on our market. Yeah, I know you want to enter into a trade agreement, US. It's just I kind of don't want to. Oh no, Super Germany has formed. Oh my god. All right, well, the Habsburgs are um, going to be pretty terrifying from here on out. I guess we, it's time for us to find a, a great power who we can be friendly with. And for whatever reason, Russia, France, and Great Britain all hate us. The only one we're friendly with is the one that we kind of need to fight later on because of their slavery. So uh, I think we're going to try to buddy up to Super Germany here. I think they are going to be our best bet. All right, we got civilizing mission done. So now we can build Panama Canal. But we do need a little bit more. More bureaucracy on the books before we can do it. Oh baby, Great Ching would be willing to form an alliance with us. You know, Great Ching has slavery banned. Great Ching accepted our proposal for an alliance. This is going to be pretty spooky for the rest of the world because Great Ching is still hanging around. They're pretty strong. Um, and now with Haiti as a, an independent great power, I think we can start throwing our weight around. I think we can start seeing who we can great power diplomacy with. And you know, I think I figured out how we are uh, going to help ourselves out here. What we're going to do is we're going to make Burma into a dominion. We'll ban slavery there too. But by turning Burma into a dominion, we'll get a land border with Great Ching and with Russia. And that'll also be really great for our trade because right now we're spending tons of our convoys just trading with Russia. That won't be necessary if we have a land border with them. Germany has jumped in on this war on Burma's side. Well, they're demanding the treaty port back. I understand why, but I hope you understand that you, you're never getting this. This is our, this is our baby. Can we get German war reparations from Super Germany? And fortunately, it looks like Great Ching is going to be able to just capitulate Burma all on their own. So all of our troops can in fact go to the Elba 
it looks like Austria, Hungary slash Super Germany is going to be having some issues in regards to input good shortages. So we we actually might be able to get this war. We'll we'll find out. All we need is to occupy just a little bit of German territory, and then we can get German war reps on top of British war reps, which would just make our economy soar. Ooh, and Great Britain and France are back at it. They're fighting for banning slavery in the Marina Kingdom. All right, good for you, UK. If you're going to be on the side of banning slavery, we can be friends again. Although uh, a lot of your subjects need to ban slavery too. Oh, holy cow. Yeah, we just occupied the crap out of Germany. Yeah, and we're going to win a big defensive battle too. Oh man, are we going to knock the Germans out before Great Qing knocks Burma out? Maybe. If we can defeat Great Britain and Germany back to back, that we, we will definitely earn our position as a great power here. Who else is a great power at this point? So it's, hey, we are the weakest of the great powers or the least prestigious of the great powers. Great Britain, France, Germany, Russia, United States, Haiti. That makes sense. No Italy yet. And now that we are an independent great power, we do need to anticipate that we're going to have a lot of other great powers stepping in to prevent us from doing fun stuff. Oh, looks like the Haitian offense is finally stalling out out here, but we've occupied so much of German territory. I think we're just going to go ahead and send all of our troops over to defend, and we're going to send a naval invasion out to try to break through Burma out here, because they do have a lot of troops from Germany helping fight back against Great Qing. We can't expect them to be able to advance deep into the heart of Burma on their own. Yep, looks like our uh, our naval invasion is going to be successful here. German war reps, there we go. So now we're getting 100k Great Britain war reps and 93k German war reps. That's good because our uh, our economy is only barely building into gold positive gold reserves here. So that, that means that in reality we're operating at like negative net 200 or something like that. It means we need to grow our, our national revenue even more. All right, we've defeated Burma and ended slavery there. And now we have a land border with this German supermarket or the Russian supermarket because Great Chain is technically part of the uh, the Russian market here. But now we have all of the, the bureaucracy we could ever want. So we'll do survey the Panama because I really do want to get the Panama Canal up and going, even though it doesn't necessarily help us as much as you'd expect because we do have control over this territory. Just being able to move goods through here should be pretty good. But we also want France to be able to get the, the Sinai up and going as quickly as possible. All right, we've hit steel frame buildings. That's kind of why we haven't been developing our construction sector very much this episode, because I wanted to go ahead and make sure we could have the budget to afford to switch into steel frame buildings. Steel frame buildings is going to be a, a pretty big upgrade in terms of our expenses, but also in terms of the productivity of our construction sectors. We should be able to build pretty quickly. And now we're just going to push out all of our innovation into production technology. We just need to get through all of these level three as quickly as we can. But but we will gladly accept a trade agreement with Japan. We want to get Japan as, as friendly as possible so that way we can possibly pull them into our market long term. All right, so we switched over all of our construction to steel frame, except for our largest construction sectors. They were a little too expensive to run all at once, but once we're done building all of this stuff, I think hopefully we'll have a, a large enough economy to actually sustain our, our growth because we are out of peasants again. So we're gonna need to find some peasants somewhere in the world. You know, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put our infamy back to work and we're going to just puppet all of this territory in here and ban slavery there. Yeah, because if we can ban slavery and puppet just like all our way through to Egypt, that would be really strong. Egypt does also have slavery instituted. If we can get a land border there, I'd really be happy. And this would let us actually go land border this way. And then if we can take control of Ethiopia, land border that way, that would make fighting against Egypt a lot easier, which is going to be important because they do have a defensive pact with France. So any attempt to ban slavery in Egypt is going to necessitate a war with France. I can see the, the late game kind of coming together. We should be able to get slavery knocked out of this area pretty easily. If we can get through here, um, then we should be able to get slavery knocked out of here relatively easily. We might have to just fight the US one-on-one -on -one and take Rift Valley in order to get that. But knocking slavery out of South Asia is going to be a little tricky. We'll, we'll have to play that pretty carefully. I don't want to fight 15 wars against the British, but now that we're a great power, we have a lot more maneuvers, so we can take a lot more primary war goals. We just need a, a navy large enough to actually hit London. 
Ooh, everybody except for the industrialists are in favor of moving to compulsory primary school. I'm in for it. Yet you can see that we are above where we were before we left the British market, but it has kind of slowed down our, our growth curve. Now, part of it is that this growth curve was not was not peaceful. It was us annexing and puppeting a lot of stuff. So we do need to get back to doing that if we want to see line go up. But Demagram is not a particularly useful territory. If we were to annex anybody in this area, it would probably be Sokoto. But Sokoto did do their homework and they improved relations here, so we're going to have to burn our relations back down if we want to get that done. All right, the Panama survey was completed, so we can build the canal. All right, so our new government that we can form is not going to have a lot of legitimacy, unfortunately. So we'll see what happens when we get compulsory primary school through. But we, we are starting to hit a, a twilight in terms of our legitimacy for Haiti. There's no government that we can form that's going to be technically considered legitimate. All right, let's make uh, Bornu into a puppet, grab war reps and ban slavery there. All right, we got compulsory primary school, so that means that we can go ahead and upgrade our education institution. And France has sided with Bornu. All right, so we are going to have a uh, another great power war here, it looks like. France has joined demanding that we open the Demagram market. Well, all right, France, we will get French war reparations. We, of course, have to mobilize everybody for this uh, this fight. But given that France is currently fighting a war with the uh, the British... Oh, no, France is on the side of the British against this uprising? Uh-oh, is there a, uh, a French-British detente emerging? That would be pretty scary. This would be a, a heck of an introduction to the world stage if we could get back-to-back -back British, German, and French war reparations. I wouldn't hate it. Ooh, and we got a obligation with Peru-Bolivia, so now we can pull them into our customs union. Now that we're building a customs union, we do need to be wary of, of folks leaving, so our infamy kind of matters. If we can make people into protectorates, then they won't leave. War with Bornu slash France has broken out. All right, are there any fronts where we're going to struggle? Looks like maybe over here so we can reinforce them. But the rest of this looks like it should be a pretty easy sweep here. Oh boy, and the uh, the troops certainly have arrived at Demagoram. There's 211 French troops there, but hopefully we can we can push through the territory we need to in order to, to win this. Yeah, Yakobo cannot hold against that entire army all on his own. He's gonna need somebody to help him out. All right, looks like uh, should be able to push the French out here and then keep holding them back on this front here, and I, th I think we can win this. All right, so we can actually form a an unacceptable government, but it's a government nonetheless that should be in favor of getting workers' protections through. If we can get workers' protections through, that is really the silver bullet for our, our SOL and our economic growth, because that's just going to push a ton of money down to the, the lower strata. And by pushing all that money down and raising up their standard of living, we, we should have an enormous population explosion, which is kind of what we're missing at the moment. We, we are back down to zero percent peasants again. Now we're, we're trying to come up with creative solutions. The easiest solution is to just like take control of parts of Great Ching and build them up. I like playing Haiti with the, uh, the central goal in mind, right? Banning slavery. We're also going to try to improve relations with Super Germany over here, because although it's it's helpful that we're getting war reps now, I don't want to have to fight them uh, for Elba every single time we try to ban slavery somewhere in the world. Oh no, France, you're not getting off that easy. Russia wishes to sign a trade agreement. Good, good deal. The Japanese shogunate will join our customs union if we just offer them an obligation. I'm 100% in for that. All right, so we can trade the French if we say open Demagram market, because they, they chose that as a war goal. France will give us French war reparations, which that sounds good enough for me. We just need we just need to get out of this war before we lose all of our convoys to to naval raiding. All right, well, it's good that we got those French war reps because the uh, British war reps just ran out. That means that, of course, that we're going to need to get British war reps back online before we lose German war reps, unless unless we're just willing to turn down our construction a little bit. Whoa, the United States has gotten completely rolled by Buganda out here. Oh my god, are they going to end up paying war reps to Buganda? That would be really funny. The Netherlands has begun embargoing us rude, extremely rude Netherlands. We will see what you what you have to say about that when we uh try to take a treaty port from you. And now we're just going to go ahead and work down to pump jacks with as many agricultural buildings as we have 
pump jacks are going to be truly outrageous, but we do need to make sure that we have a, a lot of engines on board. But fortunately, because we have been industrializing, we should we should be able to absorb pump jacks, and that really will just explode the size and strength of our economy. It'll be quite the revolution. Oh no, workers protection is is stalling here. That's unfortunate. If we can't get workers protection through, then we might want to consider council republic. But at the moment, council republic is going to be pretty difficult to get through. The only true radical we have here is an anarchist in control of the rural folk. That's pretty cool, but not enough to uh to get a council republic done. So yeah, I guess we'll come back to workers protections unfortunately. But we could we could work on universal suffrage. That'll give more power to the trade unions because they'll be getting even more power from just votes rather than restricted votes. And so by by getting into a more democratic form of government, we should be able to come back and hopefully get workers protection done. Are we willing to fight a civil war? Probably not. Not. Large numbers of North Italian people have started migrating to us. Well, good. If we can start getting mass migrations, that would be amazing. We could annex, like, Argentina, for instance, and, and incorporate them. That might not be a bad idea. But now it is 16 infamy, and so any territory that we annex, we do want to be careful about if we're trying to grow our market you know peacefully you want you want your infamy to stay below 25 whenever you can because it does make it a lot easier to turn people into protectorates but yeah you know what let's go ahead and just annex argentina they've they've been a great subject so far but we do have the bureaucracy and they do have the pops France sided with Argentina, not again. All right, well, I tell you what, guys, we're going to actually pause this episode here so that way we can uh, fight a, another war against France because I feel like we've already fought three great power wars in, in one episode, and that's probably enough. And we will fight the French for probably more war reparations and maybe a little bit of territory too. And we are a great power, and we're pretty firmly a great power too. We're in no risk of dropping down a major, so we should be able to, to keep throwing Haitian strength around the world and see what we can get out of it. Hopefully we can ban slavery, including debt slavery, but that really is just going to depend on how much time I have between now and when 1.3 drops out. There's not a lot of legacy slavery left. The United States of America actually has gone ahead and banned slavery themselves, so thank goodness for that. But Spain still needs to be taught what's up, and I think we overlooked this, but Zanzibar is independent from Oman now, and uh, we need to we need to puppet them or dominion them at least, because they're the same color as us, and we're right there in Kenya. So we'll do that after we're done fighting France yet again. All right, that's Walker, and that's our our next episode of Liberty or Death here on We Play Games. Take care.